Awesome. So we have three ideas for monetization and all of them rely on money streaming and real-time finance making sense. Uh, by that, I mean uh, our concept of like paying by the second to make sense and be applicable to many, many use cases. Uh, for, for the record, we launched in, in um, early December. Uh, we had a few thousand users since then. Um, plenty of, of uh, messages about integrations. Um, so to take them step by step, uh, what do we think about uh, as the, the, the most likely uh, way to um, like build a business on, on top of this is first um, have integrations and provide uh, these like um, shovels for, for the community to build real-time finance apps. The second one being um, a way in which we can run a real air system and the third one being uh, uh, charging interest on uh, for, for the money stream protocol. But I think I rushed things a bit. So just for, for anyone that, that did, uh, didn't see a demo of how Sabedeer works, um, I, will, I will start what I, uh, I call a stream. So a stream is a real-time payment. Uh, you're coming to this website called uh, that Sabre that finance, and you can stream money on the internet. You need some DAI. Um, it's Ethereum compatible, of course, and you can use DAI, SI, USD coin, uh, CDI, and CUSDC. Um, and you have to uh, select like uh, a number you want, uh, like an amount of money you want to stream. Let's say uh, you want five DAI. Uh, you need a recipient. I will use my address here, um, but it can be any NS domain or, or Ethereum address. And you have to select for how long you want the money to be streamed. And in this case, I will select uh, one day. Um, and you then, you then just create a stream and that's it. The money will start be continuously allocated towards, uh, in this case, myself, but um, uh, this is interesting from, from from many perspectives because if you think about salaries, with this you could verify that you're being paid in real time and not trust your employer that they will pay you in 30 days. If you are like a mentor, you don't have to trust that they will pay you in in 30 minutes and so on and so forth. So this is the core uh, uh, like piece of the infrastructure that we build and it's it's free to use and so forth. Uh, we have users for this. But now the hard part, as I said, it, it's uh, trying to monetize this. And coming back to those three models, we have seen um, interest for the first two ones. And now we're trying to figure out uh, which one will work long term. Um, and the first one, as I said, is, is, is making integration. So like kind of turning Sabre into um, like an infrastructure piece. And I think you can think about it as if you're familiar with HashiCorp, they're providing open source tools that anyone can just use. And then you, you're like paying for support. And like, um, there's like a premium tier where um, you get like some white label so, uh, like software. So that is something that we have seen um, there is interest for. Then um, this money is actually streamed in the smart contract. So if you're going here, um, this 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 um, contract here uh, will start streaming money to towards the recipient address. Now, um, if you have, let's say, like a month long stream, like 30 days, um, it would be quite interesting for the recipient to have daily withdrawals or weekly withdrawals or, or hourly withdrawals or whatever. Um, and for that, we build like a earlier system at the smart contract level where we can ping the contract and the only action that can happen is, is basically withdraw the money to the recipient. And in this case, we can, of course, monetize this by um, uh, asking the sender or the recipient to pay for a premium plan and we, on the other end, subsidize the gas. Uh, this is a model that I've seen being experimented on uh, by the kickback team too. They have uh, like this, this function in their smart contract that anyone can call and get like a 10% fee for making that withdrawal. And it, it is quite an interesting model because there are many smart contracts that um, have this like pending state of money. And in, in Sabre's case, this is like a core feature, like uh, the money is pending in relation to your Ethereum address. So this is something that again, uh, makes sense. Uh, but we have to craft the product to see um, how it could evolve 
uh, in the long uh, term. Now, the last way we could monetize this, and again, it's something that is implemented in the, in the smart contract, is using uh, interest. Um, so le let's say you want to use um, like an interest bearing asset like CDI uh, or CUSDC. You can, uh, as a payer, use this and redirect 100% of the interest to yourself or 50% or 70% or whatever. Uh, but we do have a function in the contract that lets us um, withhold 5% or 10% of that. It's, it's like an arbitrary fee. That is a fee that you're paying to us as like a protocol for, for providing money streaming to you. Uh, at the moment, the fee is set to zero, but if, if, if we scale the protocol and the idea of money streaming to uh, like a big enough uh, user base, we could uh, like get a bit of money off this interest. Uh, so to wrap it all up, yeah, uh, this was my presentation and what we're planning to do, what we noticed it may work or it, it, it may not. Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and um, I don't know, just like brainstorming this because I think all of them are interesting, but it's hard to uh, like find product market fit. Yeah, for sure. That's an understatement. <clears throat> Thanks so much for your presentation, Paul. If anyone wants to unmute and ask questions to Paul, then please feel free to, or just drop them in the chat and I'll read them out. Yeah, Paul, uh, that's, yeah. that's really cool. I really like the-, uh, the Do you guys have any initial uh, like integration partners or people that you- oh. <laughs> Yes, right. so um, we are in touch with a few uh, companies from the space to integrate the both the protocol and a bit of like UI components into their own projects, so that um, we could provide this like trustless streaming into their own projects. Yeah. Can you yeah, and I'll name just, them? Uh, I'll just uh, briefly say that uh, Gitcoin is interested in <laughs> integrating this. I think that streaming money would be a really interesting use case for our network of developers. Uh, whether it's on a bounty or maybe you could stream money on a, on a grant. So it's something that we're talking to Paul a little bit about. Thank you. So there's that, but there's also like a few um, kind of obvious use cases like Maltes wallets, like Maltes and Engelosis that we've, uh, we've been touching, uh, talking to. Uh, because if you have like a Maltes wallet or like a DAO, it really makes sense to cut the trust barrier um because you can just like start working with them tomorrow and there's no like friction between you and your uh pseudo employees or like short-term employees yeah all right so Bob, i think you had a question no yeah that was that was about the same like it was like uh, who do you think like the are the, the low-hanging fruits like in the use cases where like really, it makes tremendous sense to stream money instead of doing like discrete payments. Um, so grants, for example, you said grants, that, that I think that's a great example, but I was wondering if you had other great examples like this in mind. Um, th that is a good question. And I do have uh, a list for that. Let me actually open that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think one that you mentioned, Paul, that I thought was interesting was the the Daiko concept that Vitalik had pitched yeah. a while back. Um, I think that's like a kind of a no brainer as we start thinking about. Well, I guess it depends on how the next wave of tokenization will go, and there's a lot of downstream questions that come from it. But the Daiko is is definitely interesting. Yeah, his so, allowance. It's so cool. So uh, good. <laughs> Uh, for for uh, people uh, that don't know about this, Vitalik proposed two years ago this concept called uh, uh, DICO, um, which basically means like continuous ICO, where you pay a team um, in, in real time and there's like a tap and you get tokens in return. And if they don't uh, work on their product roadmap or whatever, you can stop it and the loss is minimized. And that is something proposed two years ago. But I just realized a few days ago that, oh, Sabre is like a generalized DICO. You can use it, but you you just like have to build a proxy on top of the uh, like Sabre contract and you can print tokens in return. But yeah, I mean, that is something easy to do. Uh, but I opened here this list of ideas that um, we we uh, like had and like the community had. And Kevin was very quick to uh, think about uh, like code mentoring um and it is like a very easy to bootstrap thing because you only need someone that like who knows uh programming and someone who yeah. needs to fix the bug and there's plenty of 
uh, of, of users in both camps. Uh, and they usually both have MetaMask because they're both technical. Um, there's yeah. that. There's also consultancy. So if, if you need legal advice, instead of like paying on, I don't know, like some huge amount, uh, amount up front or they trust in you, you could just like start to stream with someone and you know, I, I, will, I will pay you for 50 minutes and you'll provide me legal advice and that's it. Uh, that is interesting too. There's freelancing. Uh, again, platforms like Gitcoin could provide uh, a, lo um, a lot of help here. But then there is Kids Allowance, which is quite easy to bootstrap. And there has been some interest uh, uh, on this from uh, community members like uh, Travis, uh, aka Crypto Dad on Twitter. Uh, also, <laughs> Ryan Sean Adams um, has been tweeting about this. Uh, he actually said that he started paying his kid, uh, or uh, yeah, I mean, like a small allowance with Sabre. I have not verified that, but uh, it, it is something inter uh, interesting because you know that they can't spend all the money on the first night out at university. So uh, there's that. Uh, then there's memberships. Uh, imagine like for this kind of like small clubs where you have to commit to some amount of money uh, f f for a month, you could just like start the stream. And if you want to cancel in seven days, that's fine because um, I, it's not like a, like a Netflix type of business where money matters, but it's also good to have some money there. Um, so to wrap it all up, yeah, I mean, these are some ideas that we thought about, but we have to experiment. I personally like the uh, like mentorship thing and the uh, consultancy one and maybe freelancing the most because they're easy and uh, I'm technical. So yeah, but uh, it, it's really up to the community to, to uh, find the best ones. Uh, thanks so much for sharing this. I, you know, I hope that we can throw some of these ideas into a Gitcoin hackathon in the future and, and Sabler can become a platform that enables these use cases. And maybe we'll even build the code mentorship thing into Gitcoin by doing that. Uh, let's say last question for Paul and then we'll move on to, to Bald, who's gonna do a Fairment update. I had, a quick, I had a question. I want to dive more into that idea of using the interest that's like locked up in these contracts. I think that's like yep. could be a whole lightning talk. Do, do you want to dive into that now or do you want to potentially just do like a another lightning talk at the end to talk about like using interest for um, off of like money locked in contracts for business models? Uh, sorry, do you want me to, to uh, expound on that and well, explain how it works? Well, no, so we're thinking about using a similar model. Um, at Govern, and I, I think the question that we have, and I think what would be interesting to get the thoughts of this group and yours on, is sometimes when you start to earn interest off of the money that's locked in a contract, you can create kind of perverse incentives where people have an incentive to keep money from being streamed because they're earning interest on top of the money that's locked up in the contract, right? Um, and if you've given any thoughts to like how to like make sure those align, those incentives are kind of aligned, right? Like if I'm earning interest off every money that's locked up in my savior um like streaming then i have an incentive to stream less money right because then i'm earning interest on top of the money that hasn't been streamed yet um so i think that would be interesting to see how like that works or if like you guys have thought about that uh i mean incentives in general are, are hard to design but uh we like the smart contracts are pretty flexible uh with regard to that so if you start the uh, what we call a compounding stream um you can select how much interest uh, as a percentage you want to keep to yourself uh, so that if there is the risk of any of the parties uh, like wanting to keep the money streamed for, for, for more than, than you normally uh, want, you can maybe uh, keep less interest to yourself or vice versa. So uh, yeah, I mean, you can do that. So it's, it's completely flexible in terms of like how we want the interest to be distributed. Or uh, optionally, you could use something like RDI that is like a this ERC20 token that is uh, even more composable than, than Sabre when it comes to what protocol you can use to get the interest first and then how you can um, distribute that to whatever parties you want. All right. Thanks so much, Paul, for presenting Sabre. Really appreciate it. It's such a cool app. I thank you.